Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, No Nut November is coming to an end, and I thought it might be time to present to you your final boss, a bunch of sexy film cameras. That's right. I put out a call over on Instagram for all of you analog degenerates to submit your film camera collections, and you delivered. But here's the deal. I got nearly 300 submissions, and I don't want to be here all night, so I'm sorry if I don't get to yours. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover, so like a tapeworm, let's dig in. This is from Pedro Melo Marte. Oh, sh I think I have that same shelving unit. It's from Ikea. You know, it's funny. My Pentax 6x7 is actually sitting on this exact same shelving unit in my living room. I guess it's not that funny. This is kind of a baffling collection of film cameras. I feel like there needs to be like a, a manual focus 35 millimeter camera. All right, let's move on. Huge fan of the channel and your work. I primarily use the two on the right because they're from 1969. Nice. The X700 is probably hitting eBay soon. Oh no. Of course you got the Canon AE1, solid, and the Mamiya C330. I wonder why you're selling the X700. Jonas Ennis Enniscar? There's no way I'm saying that right. Hasselblad, 500 CM, it's beautiful. Mm, Mamiya 7. I bet we're gonna see a lot of Mamiya 7s. Canon AE-1. I'm guessing in this collection the Canon AE-1 was your first one, and if you're anything like me, you probably don't pick it up very often anymore. I don't really like the XA's with the uh, flash attachment. It's like almost the size of the camera. Whatever, what do I know? I'd be curious why he has two 6.7 cameras, but then again, I have three or four 6.7 cameras now, because I'm a slut. Matt Tepel, the SRT-101. The SRT-101 is like a tank. Those cameras cannot break. I'm convinced of it. What the hell is this abomination? I'm guessing it's one of those like camcorder looking cameras that shoots half frame or, or like 110 or something. Matthew Thompson. With these camera uh, film camera collections, my eye goes like straight to one camera every time. This time it was definitely the SX-70. The SX-70 just oozes sex appeal. Kodak Nameless, I don't know what that is. Two brownies. Does anyone actually buy Kodak brownies or do they just get handed down as soon as like your parents or your grandparents find out that you're into film? What the f is this? He said it's a Contax 137 MD customized with a Louis Vuitton bag. Um, you get to a certain age and you think you've seen it all. If I saw this guy on the street, I'd have a lot of questions. I feel like this is a camera you'd see in like Vegas. Wonder if he also has a Gucci Rico GR or some sort of Prada point and shoot. Let's uh, move on emotionally. Is that some sort of stereo camera it looks like? Love the Hasselblad. Hasselblad, I gotta say, their design, probably the best looking cameras ever made. Uh, another Rolleiflex. I'm starting to wonder if the Rolleiflex is gonna be the most popular camera we see. I bet it will. It's just got that classic look, you know? even though I hate him. David Rolliter. Nice, you included the cleaning cloth. It seems like you guys hired an interior decorator and literally just told them wood. Ooh, we got some gems here. Looks like we have a Fuji 645 wide 60. I'd be curious to see what, what you think about the build quality of those. I've heard it's kind of hit or miss. Yeah, of the two Pentax 6.7s we've seen, they did not have wood grips. And I kind of thought that was like the look, you know? I think this is an all around good collection. And the Leica, what is this? M3, all right. I had a Leica M3 for a little bit. Uh, wasn't a fan. This is a pretty well-rounded collection, I think. Huh, I've never seen that Olympic TLR before. Dig the Holga 120N. They take really shitty photos, but they're cameras, I guess. Nicola Bianchi, Nikon FM2. Those are fantastic cameras. I would say this is probably the most responsible collection so far. You've got a 35 millimeter point and shoot. You've got a 35 millimeter manual camera. You also have the 120 Hasselblad. The odd one out to me kind of seems like this Minolta. I guess this is fully automatic, whereas this is technically a rangefinder. All right, it checks out. All right, this is just from a guy named David. Holy sh you have the same level of camera addiction as I do. I feel like I should take a shot every time there's a Leica M6. Not like a photo, but like alcohol. Of course, you have the RZ67. I like the Nikon F and the F4. Point and shoot game, mm, not as strong as some of the others we've seen. You got two F1s. I wonder if one of them's the new F1. What the hell is this? Uh, it's probably some Mamiya square format bullshit. I don't like square format. I don't know if I've ever said that on the channel. Nicholas Greco. 
Hasselblad. I gotta take away some points because your Hasselblad back doesn't match your body. I love the four x five speed graphic. How many film cameras is too many? There is no amount, but let's find out. Oh, what's this bad boy? I don't know what this is, but it's kind of cool. Yeah, that's a pretty cool collection. I don't know, what is this? This looks like a light meter, but I'm pretty sure it's a camera. All right, I know who this guy is. Yeah, so I put out a thing on Instagram asking for your film camera collection submissions, and in it I said, all film cameras are beautiful, except the Minolta Weathermatic. And then this guy responded with a picture of the Weathermatic. I was like, okay, maybe I'm willing to concede on this. I don't know, the Minolta Weathermatic is just an ugly camera, guys. There's uglier cameras. Also, you threw in a digital camera? How dare you? The Pepsi Can camera is awesome, but those cameras suck. It's a small collection, but I love shooting on all these. Ooh, the P30, those are cool cameras. You know what, it's a small collection, but it's pretty humble. If you can use the Brownie and take good photos with it, you can do anything, probably. Nikon F3. Love the uh, power winder on the bottom. That thing is a is a statement. Oh, dude, I didn't even notice. You have a huge Kodak mat here. That's kind of dope. Andrew McNeil got all these for $5 at a thrift store. That joke will never not be funny. I love the Nikonos 5. Those are cool cameras. I've always wanted a Nikonos 5, but I feel like I'm never underwater enough. Parker Millicon. SX70, of course, an old school Leica. These Insax cameras look like CD players or something. Everyone has confusing last names, myself included. All right, Pentax 6.7 with the wood grip, but the waist level finder, interesting. Oh, f you have the Nishika N8000. Ooh, you got the Nikon 35Ti. Mikola Babintsev, holy sh Do you have enough uh, SX70s? I do like the uh, really raggedy leather on them though. It's kind of a cool look. It seems like this guy shoots mostly Polaroid, but just guessing here. Dorothy Key. I dig this collection. This is someone who's kind of like been collecting for a minute, I feel like. Oh shit, I didn't even see this up here. This is the Pentax Auto 110. Tiny little baby camera. Dude, we've seen so many Pentax 6x7s. I like these uh, Mamiya Secor cameras. They made a... Um, they made a 1000, but they also made a 2000 DTL, and uh, it's pretty rare. Yeah, this is a pretty good collection. Honestly, I'm kind of curious how often you use this camera and this camera compared to the rest of them. I'm guessing probably not very often. Sean Cirillo. Oh, you keep everything in a humidity cage. Sometimes people keep cameras and lenses in humidity cages to I think reduce fungus on the lenses, but also like reduce the moisture that might corrode the internal parts. Damn, dude. You know, actually, no, you have a normal amount of cameras. It just looks like a lot because you put all your lenses on here. Dude, they made the viewfinders, the hot shoe viewfinders on these, enormous. I mean, I guess if you're underwater, that's probably a good thing. What the hell is this? Oh, it's a uh, bellows for the Bronica system. All right, <sighs> here's the deal. I still have 250 of these to go through and let's be honest, that's not gonna happen tonight. So I'm gonna move through these uh, swiftly and forcefully, like the predator killing off mercenaries in the jungle. All right, John Carrington the third. Scary to think there's three of you out there. Wow, this is a pretty solid collection, I think. I like the Hasselblad. I'm assuming that's an H1, no. It looks like it's an H2. You know, honestly, I'm not gonna lie, my eye keeps going to the X-Pan in the top corner. I don't know what it is about the X-Pan, if it's just like the fact that they're so hard to come by. Maybe they are just the most beautiful camera in the world. I can never not admire them. Dusty Sprockets. I hope that's your real name. What is the, uh, is this alligator skin? Interesting. This looks like carbon fiber or something. These cameras are pretty interesting because I think you can move, use like rise and fall and uh, tilt on them, if I'm not mistaken. This one's from Jacob Ma. I recognize that uh, tripod head. Chamonix 4x, uh, it looks like a 4x5. And this is probably an 8x10. Oh, you've got two 4x5s. How did I miss that? With the, is that the Arrow Ektar? Yeah, it is. I think the Minolta Weathermatic was actually friends we made along the way. You're wrong. Kyle Griffiths, can't ignore my boy Kyle. Dude, everyone has TLRs. Am I the outlier here not having a TLR? I like this one. It's pretty simple, but it does what you need it to do. All right, we're making our way through, making our way downtown. Holy shit, dude. Uh, 
looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Hoarders. Damn, like when you have this many cameras, how do you decide where you're gonna shoot with when you go out? All right, we've got Allie's Vintage Camera Allie. You may know her from the uh, very popular YouTube channel called Allie's Vintage Camera Allie. Wow, these are decked out. This is like a full on professional like setup. You got LED lights. I can't afford LED lights because of the Kodak price increase. This is a pretty solid collection. Our, was that RB? Yeah. I was gonna say this is a pretty smart collection because you got 6.7, you got 6x6, and 645 one camera for each format but then you get to 35 millimeter and it's like yeah i'll take one of everything oh this is a second cabinet whoa plot twist i like the all red super cool i bet back in the like 1910s or whatever everyone rushed for this one but they were like sold out it's like the ps5 of like the 1910s yeah i'm curious how many of these you actually use on the on a regular basis because um i have like 10 cameras and i use like two here we got one from caleb as if I don't already know what his film camera collection is. Is that it? That's all he sent me? <laughs> Here's my massive collection. Dude, this is insanely massive. Yeah. This is probably the most intelligent collection so far. This is like all you need, probably. I mean, me personally, I'd want to get into large format, but <sighs> that's a whole other nightmare. All right, camera collection, no Minolta Weathermatic. <sighs> Yeah, this is all I got, but it's all I'll ever need. Leica M7 and a Mamiya 6. This is it, this is pure. One medium format, 135 millimeter, and I think that's an Instax camera. It's all you need. I could learn a lesson or two from this guy. Whoa, oh boy. You got the Leica R8. Those are so cool. All right, Toby, let's see what you got. Leica M6, Mamiya 645, Mamiya 72, Nish. Oh, f you have the Nishika. The only one that stands out here is the AE1, and I'm assuming you haven't gotten rid of it because it was your first camera. Because I'm in the same boat. All right, a lot of you guys might know David from his uh, hit podcast, which I was lucky enough to be a guest on. Um, let's check out what he's got. Never heard of it. Oh man, you've got a lot, bro. Oh, the Topcon Super D. These are cool cameras. I think these are kind of like underground gems in the film community. Dude, I'm literally losing my voice. I need to wrap this up. I've seen these cameras before. What is the deal with this? It's the shutter button, right? But like, why is it so erect? All right, we're in the home stretch here. Voice is, uh, voice is going. Oh boy, it's Raphael. He has a dog that is uh, has very short legs like Baxter. Pentax 6x7, nice. What lens do you have for it? 90-2.8, oof, it's a good lens. Sarah Teixeira, whoa, that name kind of rhymes. Leica M6, ooh, with the blacked out Leica button. Fancy. I like this collection. It's simple but effective. All right, let's check this out. Oh yeah, what the hell is this? Nikon camera with a Kodak digital, what does that say? It's like a film camera adapted to be a digital camera, maybe? Dang, this is a nice collection. I was gonna say no medium format, but it looks like you have an RB and a TLR here. Yeah, this is pretty solid. Dennis Grams, see what we got, baby. Ooh, a paint camera. All right, this is pretty, pretty humble collection. Oh, except that you have the Leica M6, not humble anymore. I actually like the way you took this photo too between the two plants. You know, I'm actually kind of surprised I haven't gotten any dick pics yet. Not that that's a request. All right, let's keep going. Alyssa, passed down from dad. Oh, that's cool. Is that, is that your dad wielding one of those bad boys? Maybe the RB, it looks like. I bet your dad was jacked having to hold that RB all day. Uh-oh, we got Trev Lee, also known as Trevor Lee. Let's check it out. You know, I was talking with Trev about this. He likes 40 millimeter lenses and I just don't get it. You know, he's got the Rolly. I, I really like these cameras, especially cause they made like 500 different variations of it. But as far as I know, they're all zone focus and uh, I don't really trust myself that much. This is a pretty solid collection. I imagine Trev's got it down to a pretty much exact science. So yeah, good job Trev. Uh, da, 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 Kent Byers, here we go. My boy Kent. Oh me, he's got an X-Pan 2, Nikon SP Black, and an RZ67. 
I don't know what to say. I'm jealous. Before we wrap up the video though, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Has this ever happened to you? You start talking to your mortal enemy and you mention you're a film photographer. They ask to see your work, but you have nowhere to display your high quality photos. Well, perhaps the solution is to build a website and host your images in a public portfolio. And what better service to use than Squarespace? Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform, which means there are never any downloads, plugins, or patches that you ever need to install. The user interface is simply straightforward. I didn't know anything about building a website before I constructed mine through Squarespace, and I had it up and running in no time. I've even renovated it several times to newer templates that allocated more space for my ever-expanding compendium of photos. Best of all, you don't need to know anything about coding to get started, but if you do harbor that knowledge, there is a module made just for you to input your own custom designs should you desire. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. Well, that's about it. Happy Thanksgiving to all of us here in the US and Happy normal Thursday to literally everyone else in the world. See you in two weeks.